Hi, I'm Lance Cottrell, Chief Scientist at Intrepid, and today I want to talk about managed attribution. If attribution is the act of assigning an identity to a visible entity or set of activities, then managed attribution is the process of controlling what the audience sees that allows them to draw their conclusions. Now, this is a little similar to misattribution, which we've talked about before, but misattribution is a state of being. You are misattributed or somewhat misattributed with respect to some audience or another. Whereas managed attribution or managing your attribution is an active process. It's what you're doing when you're controlling all of those indicators and identifiers that your audience is seeing and helping control the attribution inferences that they draw from that visible information. I think that managed attribution is a useful term in compared to misattribution because of that active component. I think when you are thinking about managing your attribution, it keeps you in that active phase and makes you think, what are the things that I need to control or change or manage to ensure that I'm attributed the way I want to be? At some level, we all manage our attribution, right? We all control how we're seen and perceived online, if only in that we typically post flattering pictures to social media and don't necessarily say things that will get us in trouble with our boss. But when you take it to the next level, managed attribution is what allows you to shape an identity or an alias online that will actually stand up to scrutiny by some kind of opponent. And there's a number of different aspects to managing your attribution online. A lot of different things you need to make sure that you take care of. The first being your computer's fingerprint. Your computer is putting out all kinds of information that identifies you to every website you go to. And then you've got your network identifiers, where your IP address and who your ISP is and so forth also provide significant information about who you are, what kind of organization you may belong to, and where you're physically located. And of course, then there's trackers from the obvious cookies that every browser accepts and then gives back to allow websites to recognize you, but also things like malware that can beacon out identifying information if it can get onto your computer. Your social accounts, your email addresses, all of the services that you register for on the internet also contribute to your attribution and are aspects that need to be managed and make sure that they don't accidentally overlap with other identities or with your true identity. All of these things need to be very carefully kept track of. Your circle of friends online can be identifying, right? If you have all fake accounts, that's probably gonna show up. If you have all sort of promiscuous frienders like uh, real estate agents or other kinds of salespeople who will friend almost anyone online, that doesn't look normal, in part because the social graph doesn't look normal. They don't know each other in the way they should. You need to think about linguistic patterns. How do you talk online? What kind of languages do you speak? How fluent are you? Are there linguistic quirks or patterns of word usage or choice that you engage in? All of those are actually extremely unique and have been used for years to identify anonymous authors of novels. But similarly, they can expose anonymous identities on the internet. And then also financial transactions, because financial transactions are tremendously tracked and monitored. Right? There's all kinds of know your customer rules that make hiding financial transactions complicated. But in many cases, your opponent, when you're engaging online, may have access to that kind of information. So it's critical to be able to hide that financial activity in a way that presents the identity and information that you want to show. Now, we see a lot of people using things like Bitcoin to try to hide. And this is really problematic because Bitcoin has a full ledger and a history of every single transaction that's ever taken place on it, and it's all public. So while your name might not be attached, if your coins track back to a central repository that's associated with you or associated with all of your other identities, the jig can really be up pretty quickly. 
Your patterns and your history can also provide a lot of information and expose fake accounts. So how long has this account existed? Does it have a trail of activity going, by, going back a meaningful amount of time? And if it doesn't, why not? Right? Most of us of a certain age have been on the internet for quite a long time. Why is it that this account on a well-known, well-established service has only just come into being? So you either need to make sure that you've got a long enough history developed that someone scanning your account won't scroll all the way off the end of it and realize that it's actually pretty young, or you need to have a very good reason why this account was recently created to support that. And this ties into patterns of activity because people can see how often do you post? What do you go to? What do you look at? Websites can see what pages you view and how fast and how often. And if you're always, for example, going to a discussion board every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern time and sucking down the entire contents of every thread, well, I don't know anyone who does that in the real world, except intelligence analysts. And so that kind of behavior can be very revealing. So if you've got an opponent that is thinking about that kind of thing, it's important for operators to make sure that their patterns of activity don't reveal them as something other than what they're portraying themselves to be, right? You need to manage even the behavior and patterns of life to be consistent with the attribution you want people to take. So to achieve misattribution, you need to use managed attribution and manage every single one of those aspects of your visible identity that the people you're trying to fool will use to build their attribution of who they think you actually are. Intrepid specializes in providing managed attribution solutions. We provide both the tools and the training to allow our customers to be successful in online investigations, research, and all other kinds of online operations against even the most sophisticated opponents. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Intrepid Cast. If you did, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell to make sure that you're notified every time new content becomes available. We post new videos every other week. Till next time, ciao.